So I guess I'll go ahead and, uh, and get started. And I think what I'll do is I'll cover the first two much more kind of straightforward things that I think um, hopefully, you know, I mean, like I said, they're fairly straightforward. So I think uh, people shouldn't have too much discussion, but of course anyone can have any questions and you know, as always, nothing's about a stupid question or anything like that, because usually if you have one, there are other people with the same question. So, um, so first, just so that everyone knows, the mobile, in case you didn't notice, the Veris mobile wallet, which we just haven't done the announcement yet, but the Veris mobile wallet um, has a new version that's just been released, and that version includes the ability to sign up to wire service uh, for your own wire account. And this is right now it's the community version um, and it only supports connecting to wire on uh, in the US right now. We will be working with Consilience who's also on the call. Um, I think there may be a first release which will just be a Varus release, you know, value Varus release where Consilience and Archetype and Value is basically supporting the community to get this out to the app and Play Store. Um, but the there will be a version at some point, I can't say the exact date, but it will be soon. And the target would be to have it out with the PBAS release that is uh, Value account backed, which will let you do not only uh, these kinds of things in the US, but many other countries as well. And so right now you can go and you can get Veris Mobile and you can sign up to Wire and you can go back and forth between um, uh, dollars and uh, USDC and USDT and DAI. And uh, Safe Trade has um, agreed, and I don't know exactly like when, but in the next some number of days, they have agreed to open up um, either Dai or Dai and USDC markets for Veris. So you'll soon, at least in the US at first, and then uh, many countries after that. You'll soon be able to, you know, get the app, um, go to Safe Trade and get Varus, or send Varus to Safe Trade, send it to your phone, and drop the funds in your bank, and skip um, if you'd like Coinbase or Kraken or any of those. Um, and that wallet is actually available now. Uh, if you just I believe it's, yeah, if you go to the um, Veris.io, you can get that wallet. And we'll announce today, it's just that I've been trying to get some other things done so that I could be uh, about where I am right now before this call. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting because I've, I've got it and I've got a wire account and it, it actually works. And, um, and when, you know, this is really just getting the fiat rails in. So that when PBAS turns on, you know, pretty much anyone in the world can just go into the system and out of the system a lot less expensively than they do right now through other means. And along those lines, um, I'll mention one of the other things that actually um, I'm going to mention for Consilience because I asked if I could say this, uh, but also, so the, the Veris Coin Foundation bought uh, Varus D a little while back, uh, V E R U S D. And we're going to, um, consilience value archetype. They'll buy it for some tiny amount, um, basically, you know, cost, uh, and they're going to then they've, you know, gotten the documents signed on, on all of this, and they're going to release or launch um, when PBAS is live, a Veris D uh, dollar 
stable coin that's regulated, fully regulated, and 100% auditable and, and backed by USD. And unlike a lot of uh, stable coin products, the really cool thing about this is that pretty much anybody with a value account when that is started, and, and I'm sure they're going to do deals with other companies, um, pretty much anyone with a value account uh, would be able to, or, or I, I guess partner accounts, would be able to go from, uh, and this will be in many countries again, go from dollars to Veris D on the blockchain in you know a minute or two, um, and go from Veris D on the blockchain to dollars that will also be able to have a debit card attached to them in fifteen minutes to half an hour, and all and these functions twenty four seven. So really a nice kind of set of capabilities that, that cements and makes our fiat rails for on and off ramps for le regulated you know, fiat and dollars and this kind of thing. Um, really nice. Uh, the KYC part of it obviously is going to be when you're going in and out of the dollar, but once you're, you know, or fiat, but once you're, um, you know, in the, in the network, then it's a blockchain. So um, the goal is to basically provide everything that's needed on the regulatory side that that we understand, and that is you know with the Veris D um, stablecoin, it's set up according to well-established um, laws and and trust management and this kind of thing. So. So we're very optimistic that all of this is actually documents are signed, people are moving forward, and we're very optimistic that, and it fits right in with PBAS, that this should be able to launch, you know, right around the same time as PBAS. And so we've got these pieces in place and anyone, I mean, the, the wallet, by the way, is a really nice upgrade to the um, mobile wallet, and it includes some new coins, some new popular coins also on Ethereum. And so uh, I'd recommend getting it, just period. Um, but if you, and please test it, of course, because it's always useful to get feedback. But if you're in the U.S., you also get this really nice uh, fiat on and off ramp already. It's in there. Um, enjoy. And then we've got, you know, the, I think uh, maybe Nick, you know, you could maybe mention, I, I think, you guys did finish uh, signing the initial documents to get this underway today. Is that correct? Yep. We signed it up this morning. Okay, great. So that's all underway and soon we will be able to announce that Veris D is coming as a, you know, it's, it's not owned and operated by the community or by the foundation. That'll be um, consilience and value archetype, but you know, a good, strong community, supportive community member. And the other nice thing about it is, um, you know, we'll be able to actually, he'll, his company will be able to actually put uh, Veris D on other blockchains as well. And, uh, and people working with Veris D actually can provide kind of wormhole services of, of value between blockchains as well in addition to bridges. So anyways, um, that's the kind of more straightforward two pieces, I think, of great news. Um, one that's immediate for people to be able to upgrade and take advantage of that. And then the other that is another uh, really exciting piece of the PBAS and DeFi, Veris DeFi puzzle that's coming into place. And then, um, so this other, any, any questions about these things, by the way? Uh, happy to answer questions about mobile or, or the stable coin, any of these things. Okay, uh, maybe everybody's just wanting to know what this little surprise is that I've been holding out. But 
but I said on the channels that if that that people should be talking and asking questions, and that uh, then I would say, but I'm going to say anyway. I, I do. I, I, maybe I missed it. Sorry. Uh, I would ask a question then, just about the ver ver USD. Um, yeah, that sure. Would be, sure. That would be a token on the VRSC main chain, or would it be on the the value chain? I might have missed that. I'm sorry. No, it'll be a token on the uh, Veris main chain, and it will be available to all the PBAS chains. So it'll be on value too. It'll be on, you know, it's basically going to be a token on the main chain, and it'll be available to any of the PBAS chains to use. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's move on to this other, this other exciting thing. So, okay, we've been focusing on PBAS, and yes, we still need to focus on PBAS and get it out to mainnet. And we've talked about how IDs are NFTs, and we just haven't been kind of, you know, jumping on the hype bandwagon. And um, and all bits, you know, brought up this issue of um of uh well if only we could have you know a decentralized marketplace for the ids then maybe they would be um you know really better than nfts in every respect we got to look at these different things and because you know things have been so busy and we've been so focused on getting uh some of these things that have taken a little bit longer than we expected to get together, you know, as soon as we were able to say, okay, the Ethereum bridge is finally complete and we don't need to do any more point releases, um, which, you know, it, we're now at that point. I took a breath. I was able to just stop um, focusing on that every day. And, uh, and so now I believe that we should be able to get this actually this week, this thing I'm talking about. Um, not only uh, have I figured out how we can, in fact, have a completely decentralized marketplace on chain for identities, the marketplace, which makes them full-fledged absolute NFTs. So these are Varus NFTs. And we not only have NFTs, we have unlimited media content in NFTs. We have contracts for media rights. We have contracts that could actually describe that the owner of, you know, assign the rights of the owner of that NFT um, such that the owner of an NFT could, could own a house or a car or literally anything that can have a contract attached to it because our form of NFTs allow unlimited amounts of content and contracts attached to them that grant rights. And so the interesting thing about this is not only do um, we have the ability to have a decentralized, a full-fledged decentralized on-chain marketplace for NFTs or identities, whichever you want to call them or use them as, um, I think it'll be done this week on mainnet. So uh, I'm working on it now. I'm mostly done with it. And it'll work on mainnet um, when it's done using our existing protocol. It so means that, you know, yes, it's true. Uh, somebody else could have done this if they simply would look at Varus and try to understand how things work. Um, but we'll have it. And I believe we can turn it on this week. And with the next release, oh, you know, I don't want to say exactly when it's coming out because I'm pretty optimistic, more than I'm even saying right now. Um, and uh, and then the other thing that's really cool about it is that you'll actually be able to um, make an offer for an ID, post your offer on the blockchain, and someone with an ID will be able to accept your offer. You'll also be able to make an offer to sell your ID. And you'll be able to receive payment for selling your ID in uh, to a Z address, 
and you'll be able to pay for an ID to from a Z address, and you'll be able to trade IDs with this model as well. And you'll be able to see what IDs are up for offer, and you'll be able to, well, actually, you'll be able to see if an ID is up for offer. I'm not putting the bigger query in until PBAS. And you'll be able to see um, what offers might be available for your ID that somebody just posted on chain. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's actually pretty much the most advanced decentralized NFT and ID marketplace that exists. And it includes zero knowledge uh, transactions. So that's kind of the big news. I thought maybe people would want to hear about that. And you might have some questions, I hope. Yeah, Mike, uh, thanks uh, for all the information. I have a question about this uh, Centwire integration for mobile. Will this all, uh, also come to the desktop version? It will, but we're, I mean, this, these are just preparation steps for PBAS. I mean, it's really, it might seem really exciting, but when it all comes together, that's when it's really exciting. But it will, I don't know when, but by PBAS. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And it will actually be more than Sendwire. It's not, you know, the whole thing with the stable coin, the back end, you know, Sendwire. So just a little, I mean, we did kind of move away from what I think of as the really exciting piece, but just so that everybody knows, you know, we're going back and forth between Sendwire and stable coins um, only because Sendwire, honestly, um, uh, the, the prices for converting between fiat and uh, cryptocurrencies are so, uh, so bad that uh, really we couldn't see subjecting anyone in the community to those prices. And we figured it would be better for everybody to use a different exchange to do it. So anyways, um, I could answer other questions about any of those points, I guess, but- yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask you something? So uh, the transfer of IDs. So basically, like I, I put put up my ID for sale, and then someone could like find out if it's for sale, and they just send the money, and then it'll be transferred automatically to them. Is it really that easy? It's really that easy. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Um. um how how does this uh, relate to recovering an ID, um, and and how those interact? In other words, uh, you. So the way it works. So the way yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is exactly why I needed to have just some time to stop doing the other stuff, you know, and stop like so that I could, you know, get the thoughts on this. So so here's how it works. When you so there's there are three new APIs right now, and um, I may actually integrate uh, two of them, but I'm just going to describe what they are. There's make offer, take offer, and get offers. And make offer. So actually, these are also full fledged atomic swaps for all currencies as well. So on PBAS, these can just be used to do OTC fully decentralized trades from any currency to any currency with one transaction. Um, on um, mainnet at first, they're really gonna be useful for moving, you know, trading IDs or, or um, buying or selling IDs in a fully decentralized way. And so uh, the way that it works is you have, you say make offer, and you say what you're offering and the offer is effectively described the same way as like a send currency, but it's, um, it says what currency, how much, you know, this kind of thing. Right now you can only do one currency, uh, one amount, but there's really nothing in the, like somebody could make this themselves. I'm just putting it in uh, to the demon, but somebody could even just make this as an app right now. Um, and it would also work. I'm using VDXF, um, but basically, you know, we just need more people to understand what Varus is and start trying to 
make things on it for businesses or whatever, but that's okay. So what it will do is, um, is you say what you're offering and your offer could be an ID or your offer can be funds. And then you're saying what you're offering it for and the four can be an ID or the four can be funds. Now, if you say what you're offering it for, and that is an ID, then you define the entire ID. So that includes revocation, recovery, everything else. And the only way that's actually, yes, uh, Reta, that's uh, exactly right. So the only way, uh, Reta asked, would the ID be transferred in T or Z? It can be either. If you, there are some limitations because of the way that Z signatures work. Um, I, I should say that it, it will support Z. I believe I can get Z in um, this week. Uh, I believe I can. If I can't, I might just get it on T first, but I believe I can get Z in this week, no problem. Um, and as far as uh, a barter system like uh, plus automated escrow, yes, that's in fact exactly what you can do with this. And so um, you say for, you know, this ID, but you define the ID that you want it to be. So whatever the ID was, you're basically saying, when I get it, it needs to be this. And so you define everything about it, including the revocation and recovery. So basically you have full control when you define it and when it's, and when you get it. And um, so that's kind of the model and how it interacts with. So it doesn't, it, revocation, what matters is that if somebody wants to actually sell their ID, they will need to be able to change all aspects of it, or they won't be able to sell it. Unless it's, you know, yes, that's just true. They would need to be able to change all aspects of it or they won't be able to sell it. So, no. Um, you know, it's just going to be uh, something you can do because there's no, see, the thing is, it's just enabled already. It's been enabled all the time. It's like, We've always had the power to go home. You know, it's like it's been enabled all the time. It's just that, you know, people just need to understand what Barris is and what kinds of applications they can make, which are just an incredible number of them. And this is really kind of like just using the existing protocol. And so that means it isn't like a special, you know, chain function. And, uh, and so um you know it's it's normal like we might make if you really want to be part of a listing or something that there's some kind of a fee that you pay for that um in the pbas time but in this it's uh you know yeah there are a lot of questions about this this is yes those do we have do we have plans for fractional owner and you say you meaning i don't know you too um, do we have plans for fractional? I think we have plans for it, but it's not, this is not the same thing. So um, that will be done uh, differently, more like a DAO, you know, that that's how that will work. Um, but this, and, and actually that was kind of, a, you know, thinking around how this might work. But so what this does um, is it really is just the kind of ownership you have now, but so you could sell a multi-sig, ID, you know, a company, you could sell a company this way. I mean, literally, you can sell anything this way on chain um, because IDs can have contracts bound into them so they can represent anything. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, and, and Jorian asked, how would this work with an ID exported to other PBAS chains? So, Every ID, when you export it to a PBAS chain, is no longer the same ID. And it's a split. It's like another ID with that same, but it's on that other chain. So you can send to it on that other chain, but it's always that ID on that other chain. 
um, this will handle one chain at a time and all chains will be able to do this. All PBAS chains will be able to do this. Um, and so, you know, you could conceivably have an ID that you uh, sell on different chains, but everyone will understand that, you know, where the ID is created is basically the root ID. And if you have that ID on other chains, then it might reduce the value if you don't sell those. I don't know. Um, but for things like NFTs, for contract bound, you know, things for it really any kind of, I mean, people think of NFTs because it's all the hype these days. This will do, you know, way beyond what people are thinking of as NFTs. And an NFT can have all the content that a profile can have. It can have, you know, I mean, there's just an unlimited amount of stuff. People are working on defining NFT um, composite complex NFT data file formats. And it's like, why? Because, you know, we already just have all the formats we need and we already have unlimited amount of storage in NFTs in any amount of complexity, why define another thing? So, um, so that's, that's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell. And, you know, on top of our functioning ETH bridge that people can now go to and use, and I've been using and, and it's been working great. Um, you know, this is just another major thing that actually nobody's going to have to wait even for PBAS to start using. So pretty exciting. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll wait for some questions because if there aren't a lot of questions on that, I mean, that's the stuff that I really had. But I'm, um, uh, yeah, there, okay, Mar, was make offer, get, no. Uh, I mean, you'll see it shortly. I mean, uh, Rich is asking, can I? Can we see all the offers and bids out there? At first, no. You'll be able to see the offers for an identity or the identity actually offering, and you'll be able to see. Um, but it, but it's going to be specific right now to an identity because it really doesn't, until we have all of the unlimited multi-currencies on the network, it really doesn't make sense to use this to exchange currencies. Um, but soon, you know, as soon as PBAS is out, you'll be able to, um, to use this for uh, exchanging currencies on testnet when this next release comes out using the same mechanism, you'll be able to make currency offers and exchanges. Um, but you'll be, so you'll be able to see the offers for a particular currency, um, but you won't be able to see, um, and you'll be able to see offers for a particular ID, but, um, yeah, there's, I think there's some question about the currency piece that still like, what is it you'll exactly be able to see? And that kind of goes back to the other question about will there be a fee? Because if you want to be listed in the in the kind of all offers for all the IDs that are up for public offer or something like that, I think that needs to have an actual fee in it because I think it's going to be using then um, a little more of resources. So right now, it's just not, you know, you're not going to really have a global directory or listing on mainnet, um, is it possible to see a history of Verus ID ownership? Absolutely. Well, it's, a pos it's possible to see a history of Verus ID ch changes, but as far as ownership, I mean, if you can know who that is who owns them, you may not be able to find that out. Yeah, R. Spayeth asks, can you just work through an example of, say, I have an ID, I list it for 500 Verus, someone wants to buy it. So then you say, um, make offer, and you say, offer your ID, and you put in a change address, because I need that. And then you say, um, you're gonna offer your ID, and you say how much you want for it, 500 Varus, just like send currency to yourself, 500 Varus, basically. 
And that's all you do. You call the API and, and then it's just an offer now on the blockchain. You get a TX ID for your offer. Um, and, uh, and then somebody looks at your ID, sees it up, sees it's up for sale for 500 Barris. And, uh, you know, they may be watching it and they say, take offer. And if they have 500 Barris in their wallet, they now have your ID and you've got 500 Barris. That's how it works. Not harder than that. And it'll be the same for currency exchanges and things like that. Can I compare it? Um, to the extent that you are sending, like actually converting an ERC-721 or other kinds, as far as the, the way that you exchange, I can't really compare exactly. Um, because I need to actually go and learn about all the other ways that they're doing it. But what they're basically doing is, uh, you know, contract funds come in and the ERC-721 exchanges ownership. Um, but the, I think the only real major difference right now in terms of actual function of what you can do is that these are like, these are mega NFTs. I mean, these are not just NFTs. These are like an identity is already way beyond an NFT, number one, because of all of, the, I don't wanna go through all of what an identity is or, or the profile that it can support or the artwork or the contracts or the you know, revocation recovery, all these different things. So, but then also you have the ability now to exchange it on chain and you have the ability to um, to pay for it and receive payment uh, with Z addresses, you know, which I think that is something that uh, isn't really an option for people. So how do you exchange a Varus ID right now? They're already, you know, incredibly capable and valuable for what they are. But now we have the ability to have, you know, these marketplaces on chain, um, you know, actual transfers that make sure you, you know, follow whatever regulations you need to follow to make sure you use these things. But, um, you know, we just make technology. So, uh, oh, an, an ENS domain though is actually, um, you know, that's really difficult because an ENS domain is actually not the same as a fully decentralized uh, transfer or an NFT, I believe. Um, right now, Reta, the, the, the sub IDs are something you can make um, if you make a, a blockchain, but uh, definitely there's been a lot of thought on how you might be able to make um, IDs if you own an ID and uh, so um, right now there's not I, you know you can do it by making a blockchain you can issue IDs uh, I would expect there's going to be a way that you'll be able to issue IDs as sub IDs but um, I don't know that there's going to be that by the first release of PBAS pretty much right now this is the only major feature that I know of that we get in addition to whatever we've been expecting already for PBAS. And it's, you know, pretty major. <laughs> like various NFTs are gonna be better than any NFTs. And um, so it's kind of, now we can finally start thinking about and, and talking about the fact that there's this, but, but I think before we go out and really make noise about it, I'd rather get an article written about how this works. So maybe we should wait until we get the, um, you know, the on-chain market in place, that's the ID market. Um, but we also have some pretty amazing uh, plans in progress. I mean, people know about the gold coins that we expect those to be NFTs, the silver coins will be NFTs. Um, but we'll also, you know, there's, there's work in the background that I'm optimistic about, and I just don't, I can't, I don't want to set any expectations that, you know, 
we might not be able to to hit, but I'm pretty excited about the NFTs that we will actually be able to um, launch with. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, Mike, could this be used as a way of exchanging currency without fees? Am I, um, am I on the right, right path with that thinking? Yeah, so you'll be able, I, as far as the without fees, it's again, in order to make a listing, a query model where you'll be able to do the right queries, which I need to, I still need to put some thought into that. So if you're going to do um, listings of currencies and you're going to do a query model, there might be some small exchange fee uh, for, you know, that goes to miners and stakers, um, but it's not going to be, you know, it, it will be definitely possible to um, use this. The, what the actual exchange fee is really going to relate to listing. So if you wanted to, for example, trade with someone, when I say listing, I mean, is get offers going to show your offer in the same, you know, and it, I don't know the answer if there's going to be like what, if there's going to be a fear or what it will be, it'll be based on kind of what the resources are that are, that are required, kind of the big picture of that. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that it's going to be, I mean, you can certainly, you will certainly be able to do the following. You can do private transactions with this. So what I mean by that is um, you don't have to post a listing on the blockchain at all. Um, you actually can use make offer and take offer to do an off chain exchange of something and never post the offer on the chain and um and post the single atomic trade or swap it's more than this today's atomic swaps it's it's like a hundred you know it's 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 not a new i mean basically what it does is it um it has it all happen in one transaction there are some other, I think there's like Everpay did something like this on Ethereum and people have talked about doing stuff like this. But so basically if, you know, here's here's a way that I think somebody um, who's in the community who, who's been asking about stuff like this from a legal perspective could use that, that aspect. So say that they have a, you know, stock and a subscription offering for stock for just only qualified investors, but they want to be paid in Verus D or they want to be paid in Verus or they want to be paid in, you know, some other currency on Verus, um, like all the different currencies that will be on Verus. Um, then they can just simply attach the subscription amount of stock and the contract agreements and everything else to uh, an identity and they can um, create a transaction that would pay for that identity and give it to the person who's the qualified investor who wants to buy that stock and they just post it and when they post it it's done you know it's that simple this same workflow can be used for i think as far as i know literally any kind of transaction technically in the world, there might be some, you know, clearly there are regulations in some jurisdictions that say, oh, you've got to get this document and that document filed with this place and that place. But as just an actual provable, you know, transaction that includes the entire execution esc escrow free, um, this is that. And so if you do that, the way that I just described, then yes, you uh, could do it without fees as well. Like there, there's no way to, to, for the blockchain to say we, that it should, that it needs extra fees for that or should charge you extra fees for that. It's really just the listing pieces in the APIs. That's going to be a question of, you know, how much does that cost?
And Max is absolutely right about that. The, the desktop app is basically on the GUI side. Um, it, it needs to, there's a backlog on the desktop. There's a backlog because we don't, you know, we, we would be really happy to get some really great, um, you know, talented user experience uh, designer slash developers. I mean, we have designer, but the, the people who can really, you know, take that and, and, and have people who can work on and help with those things. Because our goal right now on the, on the GUI is that we're, our target is just to get these features and this one too done by uh, PBAS. Not like if it comes in earlier, it's about testing and getting things in for testing. And, and you can see that, you know, features in the daemon are coming in before the GUI, but that's completely understandable because there's, I mean, you know, Michael Toot Jr. did integration of the, um, of the send wire piece and he's been fixing different things in the GUI and, and there's a lot of things going on and, and it involves, you know, multiple um, people to finalize these changes. So yes, make offer, take offer and get offers. So the way that I would kind of see this in the GUI is that if you've got IDs in the GUI, I think eventually we want to make those um, able to really display the uh, profile. If you look, by the way, at MyCat on Veris.io in the ID lookup, you'll see that it now displays my profile there. And and uh, and so we would want the wallet to be able to kind of at least display like an avatar image or something for an ID. And the wallet itself could actually just have like little, you know, offer like amounts, what's the highest offer I've got for my ID? It could just be a little field under your ID in the wallet and you could ignore it or you could just click on it and sell your ID. You know, I mean, I was kind of thinking that might be a, a, a better way for the UI to work for this in the wallet without, you know, sure, you know, offer an ID for sale, this kind of thing. Um, you know, it's really a pretty advanced feature in the sense that uh, it's, this is not how it's going to integrate into applications. Like applications can be written for all this stuff. You know, somebody could write an atomic dex on top of this, or they could just move atomic or use it like interface atomic dex to this once it's there, you know? Um, so a lot of what we do sometimes is just this new technology underlying platform. And, you know, right now we have a platform that actually goes kind of far beyond what people are using it for already and this is just an example of that because like i said this is something that anyone you know who understood the protocols at all like uh, not just the id protocols but the protocols and a little bit about the id protocols could do and there are many other kinds of applications like that right now so um you know at some point there's going to, we're going to hit a tipping point and people will realize that they should be like ending development on other systems and spending their time on this, but you know, and then, and then they'll be part of the community, but I don't know when that's going to happen. And then, you know, we're not going to go away. It'll just get closer and closer to when that happens until that happens, I think. So um, as far as uh, someone asked about blue sky, no, I mean, nothing really happened necessarily about blue sky. Um, yeah, I do, I do want to point out that, uh, I just saw a notice that handshake protocol had joined the BPSAA and I want to mention that the, um, so the BPSAA was a little bit of a, of a problem when it first got started because, um, we, uh, at the time, uh, we were explicitly kind of not part of starting that and when i spoke to uh to dreath about that it became kind of this i spent like two days of actual time just trying to figure out how we might make that work and that ended up not working uh and so one thing i'll mention you know the blue sky thing is one thing um if you know bringing in like something like the handshake protocol um, into that. And then I think we're gonna have to start understanding that 
that there are groups that you know people are just kind of picking their um, solutions for things. And we obviously have a lot more than, for example, what Handshake has. And, um, and uh, so with Blue Sky, I think that eventually they're going to need what we're building. And I think other people will too. And if they don't use what we're building, I think it's going to be in the long run, um, you know, we'll see. But uh, I... I'm not, I'm not worried about what's happening with Blue Sky and I'm not worried about with ha what's happening with other projects where a lot of people get together and they just have different pieces and they're not necessarily as good as the pieces that we've got to begin with. Um, so I think we're in really, I actually think we're in really good shape. And if you just kind of think of how these pieces will come together, if you've taken a look at TestNet and if you think about, okay, then we're going to have, you know, a minute or so be able to go from a debit card or payments to the blockchain to be stored on your revocable recoverable ID. And from there, you'll be able to send friction free to pretty much any other currency and people will be able to exchange identities, currencies, any, anything on the chain, like anything. It's a marketplace for anything. You can make an eBay on it. You can make anything. And if you want to make your own because you're going to have too much transaction volume or you want to make a bunch of them, you can. So um, we're not far away from that. So, you know, everybody's got their plan and I'm pretty excited about our plan and I'm getting more so. And this was kind of a nice, a nice thing because it's been taking a long time for some of these other things and this will, this will be on mainnet. So working on the next release that will include this ability to do offers and, and transactions with IDs on chain um, in some number of days. Oh, the debit card, uh, T-Bone's asking about debit cards and Varus. Okay, so here, yes, it will be done through value, uh, value V-A-L-U uh, or archetype is, you know, company is value slash archetype. And uh, it will be done through um, value and they will be offering the debit card and it will be, um, you'll be able to move in and out from, you know, Varus D to this blockchain or other uh, stable coins on other blockchains actually, or Varus D on other blockchains in and out of your debit card. And the debit card will be attached to an FDIC insured uh, fiat account. And, you know, where, where the community project kind of stops is at the blockchain. And then from that point, it's companies and centralized, you know, financial infrastructure. Um, if we go to another blockchain, obviously that still could be community depending on how centralized that other system is. The coin miner asked, um, will the marketplace functionality be only on, on the various chain or will PBS chains all come with the same functionality? All chains will come with the same functionality. Lin's, Lin asks, will it be possible for ETH users to purchase various IDs via the ETH bridge? I honestly don't believe that that's going to be likely before PBAS or by PBAS because there's a, still a lot to do. Um, you know, I say that we're going to get it done, but there's still stuff to do on the ETH bridge that isn't related to any additional uh, capabilities. So um, I do not, I, I have no plans and, and no expectation that we're going to have anything on the ETH bridge more than what we've already planned for. The new mobile wallet is available now. Um, Oh, interesting. Oh, I think I'm making a mistake. Um, I think I, oh, maybe it's available in a day. Okay, we're going to announce. I think I pre-announced it. I think it's available for me and I pre-announced it. Um, okay, so 
uh, yeah, I think the new mobile wallet will be announced in a day or so, or maybe, yeah, and it will be available then. Sorry, Crypto278 and everyone else. It's here. It works. It's coming in the next day or two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so any other questions? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lynn um, and everyone. Uh, any other questions? I mean, hopefully there are. Uh, uh, could you create a gateway currency and do make offers? That you, any, any blockchain uh, currency that's on the blockchain or any ID on the blockchain um, can uh, can use this mechanism. So if it's a centralized, uh, you know, Veris D, you could exchange for something else, or you know, I mean, it's really just an open-ended capability. So yes. Um, the question that was asked the other day, Mike, was about ERC 721s and um, interoperability between other NFTs on other chains. Do you have any thoughts around that? The, I mean, the main thing is I don't even know what that means, honestly. There's like someone would just have to say, what do they actually want to do? Because there is no such like broad definition of what it means to interoperate between two GIFs or two, you know, pictures that are just like that their ownership is recorded on some ledger. Um, you know, who respects if the ownership is transferred to another ledger? Uh, it's all based on law. It's not really, I mean, that's what I was saying before. NFTs, like we can define things. I don't actually know. That's to me, not a technical question. And so, um, so I don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't know how to answer it because uh, when someone says that they want to do something like interoperate with an NFT from one chain to another, then if it means that, you know, could an ID prove that it owns an NFT? Sure it can. Um, on another chain? Sure. Uh, can they prove that they, you know, own an ID? Well, it's a bi-directional proof. So yes. Um, aside from that, you know, um, you know, one chain's not controlling keys on another chain, so I don't know what it means to be interoperable. I know that we're going to have way more like capable NFTs than any other chain, and I know that if you had the ownership of an NFT on one chain, then I guess whether you could move it to another chain might actually depend on what the rights of that NFT say, you know, it's, so it's really not, it's a very complicated question that are the kinds of questions people ask that don't actually have technical meaning as far as I understand, unless there's something that they ask about, you know, if they asked you this and they say, we would like to do X, then I could know what that means. But if you say we would like NFTs that interoperate, I mean, for all I know, that could be a new kind of NFT that has AIs in it that would be able to talk to another NFT that would have AIs or NFTs that, you know, within a game, a game would recognize, say, NFTs on Ethereum, NFTs on Verus, and NFTs somewhere else, you know, and they could all interact within the game. So it's hard to say what that means. I gave them a similar answer and uh, said that obviously the IDs could show that they own them, but ultimately making something work in another realm would depend on the creators and what they wanted to do. So it's, 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 you know, it just, it requires, yeah, it requires some kind of technical description of what it is someone wants to be done. Because, you know, somebody could figure out something that matters in some way they should interoperate. And then you could ask a question, could that be done? But it's kind of like interoperate is just so broad, which it sounds like you already understood. And so I think the answer you said is correct. Yeah, so, and, and by the way, Crypto278, um, this, how would you be alerted that someone would want an ID that you had for sale? You have to look through transactions. Will there be some type of alert? The desktop, like I said, you know, it's not going to have this in right away. 
um, the API for get offers will be there and the desktop will eventually get it in so that, you know, as far as an alert, I don't know, maybe there'd be a, maybe it'd be, I mean, anybody can contribute to the desktop. So please, whoever's listening to this and wants to have new capabilities in, think about how you might do a pull request and, and contribute to it because it's like all of the questions of what the new features are going to be in the desktop. And I'm not, a, it doesn't bother me and saying, it's like, it's really a question of, can the existing devs who are already trying to get PBAS out do more? It's kind of like, and I'm not, it doesn't, it's not, I understand why you would want that because yeah, I would want that too. Um, I don't know when that'll come in. It's absolutely easy to put in because there will be a get offers API for every ID. Um, the other thing is that offers can expire and in fact will expire. So they'll, you know, each offer is going to have some kind of an expiration as well. So. Okay, Tango 808. Person A buys an NFT of a cyberpunk for 75,000 that lives somewhere in the ETH world. Would they somehow be able to bridge that NFT over to Varus and put it into the vault? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's not just that the others are not good. This is specific enough that I know how to think about answering it. So, all right. It can be done. Uh, it isn't done and it won't be done before PBAS goes live. I'm pretty confident because the way that that would um, have to be done is there would have to be on the or an Ethereum bridge, there would have to be an NFT capability that would take an ERC-721 and that would hold, like basically take custody of it in the contract and then mint a representative um, currency for that single NFT and send that currency to an ID and only release that uh, ERC-721 on Ethereum when that currency is sent, kind of like it's sent right now on the bridge. So, uh, you know, it might have been the question that, Nick, you were asking, but the problem that I've got is, and it's my problem, is that when I have a really open-ended question, I start to be like a computer these days. I really can't um, extract the kind of specific question out of it because I think about all the possibilities. And so with this as a specific possibility, could you send control, could you put control of an ERC-721 under the control of an ID? And in fact, yes, you could do that the same way by sending it to the various blockchain, the same way that you put currencies under the control of an ID. So yes, you could control a really expensive NFT with a revocable, recoverable, lockable Varus ID. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even, uh, I mean, I have actually thought about this before, but it just isn't something, you know, I, I put aside the plans to do more things on the bridge uh, recently. And so we're gonna get out on the bridge what we wanna get, like what we wanted to get out on the bridge in PBAS. And it's gonna be that. And uh, we're not gonna get things like this until after. But yes, you can do that. You could do that. Oh yeah, actually, am I happy with the overall testnet progress? Absolutely, I mean, I would have liked you know, I mean, I, I think everyone wants to have certain, like things go more quickly, but the test net looks great right now. Um, I do, there is something going on that I, I haven't even had minutes because I actually prioritized getting this uh, marketplace working and I want to get this out of mainnet so that we can have a major, like major capability that we can launch and announce that is on mainnet, you know, um, and it is all of those things. 
and it was also not something that we talked about that we would have. Um, so I, you know, I want to get that out onto mainnet, and I and so I've been uh, a little bit deprioritizing looking into the ITO conversions that um, I think all bits mentioned, and I don't know if there is an actual issue there on the ITO chain and conversions, and I'll need to talk to all bits about that um, or look at it. Uh, so I don't know if there's an actual issue, but I've been very happy with the fact that the bridge just continues to just work like clockwork. You send across, you send over, it's all working. Um, you know, cross chain is working. The, uh, I have some, you know, I'm a little backlog to get to looking at ITO there, but I think the questions came up for me yesterday, for other people today. And I don't even know if there's an issue on the ITO PBAS chain yet or not. Um, and I know that there are other people wanting to launch chains too. So, and our space says, so the next mainnet fork will have PBAS bridge merge mining involved. The next mainnet fork is gonna have, I mean, okay, let's just say what the next mainnet fork will have because PBAS, a lot of people don't really, they, they don't, the next mainnet fork. There. So next mainnet fork will have PBAS, which includes multi-chain, multi-currency and DeFi. It'll have the Ethereum bridge with all currencies bridged and PBAS connectivity to other chains or even future bridged external chains. Um, so all networks that connect to Verus will be able to connect to other networks connected to Verus and take advantage of the fee capabilities. Um, it will have, uh, the fee pool is part of that, is part of PBAS. So that's in there. Um, it will have the most robust NFT, NFT capabilities in crypto because they're actually way beyond what NFTs are now and they can do everything that NFTs can do now. Um, there will be an on-chain marketplace for peer-to-peer -peer exchange of NFTs, IDs, currencies, and anything that can be transferred by contract. That's the next main net fork. Oh yeah, Vault, <laughs> sorry. That's just a given, so I'll put that in. Uh, oh, uh, Crypto 278, I, I would really like to have a nice holiday season this year. So I am really working to make sure that we all get this early. And if we don't, I'm gonna be as sad as anybody, so. I, that's what I'm, I'm working for getting this before. The marketplace and all this other stuff. Um, I mean, I think we're going to have that in less than a week on mainnet because yeah, I think I'm very optimistic about that. Redman asks about the, um, you know, could you use that currency as like of a like a DAO kind of shared ownership? That isn't how. I mean, yes and no. I mean that that isn't exactly how we were going to do that. Um, I think you could probably clue something together with that. Um, I think that the real kind of model for ownership based on currency right now is either going to be, you know, single or the one that we're going to want to get to soon after PBAS. But I don't, I don't want to talk really about post PBAS things. Just definitely is the case that we can have um, DAO capabilities on, uh, you know, on IDs and currencies. Um, Mike. Is there anything that you see as a concern to the um, purchasing and exchanging of IDs? I'm just curious what you thought in that regard. You know, um, all I would say is this, as in everything, uh, you know, there's technology and there's how you use the technology. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to just try to be 
I guess when it concern when you say concern, I, I don't see any tech any concern with how the technology will work. Um, and all the other things are probably to you know questions for experts who are experts in things that I am not that I, where I would be a lay person. So if there are questions about you know are are there potential legal implications or things like I that is not my space and I can't give that kind of advice and you know I would just say that uh, you know it's kind of nice that we will be able to actually barter and trade and do different things but you know just all the other stuff on how people use it that's a question of you know what people do with technology and so I don't know exactly what your question refers to but I have no concerns about this working relative to the technology yeah uh, I didn't mean soft concerns more um, how it uh, interacts or uh, might play into the incentives of the blockchain itself oh well so here's the thing what one thing that someone could do to try and capture um, you know so here's the blockchain now will have the ability to do uh, DeFi with you know completely decentralized um, MEV resistant conversions at a great price okay but an exchange could actually use this technology that I've described to allow um, to like build an exchange that is a traditional type of exchange with an order book that executes its orders on the blockchain you know, there, I mean, it, it really could do this without having to have um, separate databases for anything. So, you know, it, it could basically like use transactions and orders and well, we need separate databases to manage the, the order book and that, but when it actually executed, it could do it on chain. I mean, there, there are really interesting things you could do with this technology. And if they did that, you know, they wouldn't need to have like on chain listing or anything. And so basically that could, um, if they were successful in making an app that was a nice user experience, you know, um, say it was even like Atomic Dex or some app that decided to do something like this, then they could conceivably try to uh, capture the conversion fees that would normally go to uh, on-chain, you know, miners and stakers and people who are holding the basket currencies, but they also would do that in a way where they're going to have a centralized component and someone who's using it is going to have to go through, you know, another set of steps. And then the question is, you know, are they going to make a good enough user experience? And if they are, it's just another, like, it's okay from my perspective because I think that there are inherent advantages to never giving up custody or never sending your currency, you know, to anywhere else. If somebody did something like an atomic dex, you know, on top of this, um, I mean, they could conceivably do it, but they would need either another database or they would need to use the listing services on chain. And if they use the listing services on chain, then there's going to be some, fee for those listing services almost certainly I like I said I need to figure out what the resources are going to be but there's going to be something because it takes it will take some chain resources so it's only reasonable um, so I think it's you know I think that where we are and, and actually it's uh, consilience likes to say the the kissing point of finance and physics is what he says you know and it's really true because it's hard to see how we could make a more efficient kind of um, AMM system. We can, you know, we can optimize what we've got, but it's hard to see how we could make an inherently more efficient one. And I think that we've got, you know, fees there that reflect the efficiency and they're the best in the industry. And then if, if you're able to do these kinds of swaps and you're, and you're going to put something on top of it to keep track of it, that's going to cost something. If you're going to keep track of it on the blockchain in a way that gives you a real kind of an order book to execute on, that's going to cost something. There's going to be some user experience work. So it's like, 
between everything, probably however it shakes out, you're going to end up having some fee that's, I mean, we're lowering fees for everybody and we're still allowing yield for everybody. So I think that it's just going to end up being that you'll have all the different options of ways of doing exchanges of all different assets, even assets you could never exchange. Like NFTs were kind of the big thing you could exchange that are beyond currencies. And now we're going to take that to very much the next level, you know, and, uh, and I really like, I, I, I mean, we should start thinking about if we're going to sell anything big, we might want to think about once this is all done, you know, I think we could probably, we have a, a lawyer who's joining the community and I can talk to him about this, but, um, you know, he might be able to, to put together some uh, transfer contracts that could be used for people who want to sell something big that, they, that they're interested in, a real thing, where they could just do it on the blockchain, you know? So um, anyways, that's, uh, you know, there is definitely the potential for people to create all sorts of markets. But I think that when you combine this capability that I've just described that we're going to have soon on mainnet and what we're going to have on that we have, what we have on testnet that we'll have with PBAS, I think we're enabling all the forms of human commerce that exist today on chain decentralized, I think. I mean, except, you know, the, the ones that don't require like being there, even those, the recording of those can be so. T-Bone asked, if you're an artist, could you own an ID and use that ID to create sub IDs that you put your art on and sell on the marketplace? So this is the same question that Retta asked earlier. And that is in fact, exactly a scenario that we are looking at. And I just can't say whether or not you're going to be able to do that before PBAS because we've got to get PBAS, PBAS out with all that it has. Yes, we want to be able to do that. Yes, that would be a great thing to be able to do. I don't know yet if that's going to be out before PBAS because we can't add anything more. We need to get it out and we all want to have a good holiday, including me. And getting it out will ensure that we all do. So that is how I look at it, including me. I want the same thing as what you want on that, I guess would be the answer. And I don't have an answer of if that's going to be in the PBAS release or not. And the only way it's going to be is if it doesn't, you know, require us slipping um, in order to get it. All right. Well, I don't, I don't have any more um, right now. And I'm going to then just, go back to uh, working on a release that um, once we get, we'll actually be able to do this stuff. Um, so, oh, and I'll just mention, there was uh, the latest release stopped showing um, currency prices in the desktop. And the reason is that the Atomic Explorer's certificate expired and so we do have also a fix for that that's going to come with this next release where we're just moving away from Atomic Explorer and we'll just get our price feed from Coin Paprika. Um, so that'll turn back on. It won't. It means that some of the less known uh, Komodo currencies that are in the wallet won't have prices on them, um, but all of the normal currencies will. So that's all I've got. Um, thanks everybody for, for joining and listening and, and let me know if you have ideas and I will just be working on getting this next release out as soon as we can. That'll include this capability we talked about. And, uh, and then also um, look for an announce for the mobile and I'm sorry for uh, jumping the gun on that. I actually thought that it was out. Um, so, but it, uh, unless there's any issue, which I don't think there is, it'll be out as soon as it um, can be, like within a day or two, so the mobile. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you very much. That's a phenomenal announcement and incredible work, a testament to the, the various blockchain itself and like the, the technology that you put together. 
even from the beginning, it sounded like you said, you know, anybody can do undone it if they just took what Varus has and uses it. And so you're showing us even more of these capabilities. Incredible. Thank you for this uh, nice, very nice update and wishing you well. Thanks, Juliana. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, if uh, I know that, yeah, maybe we should talk offline about some stuff. Maybe there's some opportunity to talk about some stuff about this later. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day or evening, whatever it is for you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.